Hello, it's me back in the pantry again, looking for a quiet spot in the house. Uh, <clears throat> so this training, it has three components to it. The first one will be um, this video you're looking at now. And then another one will be a Google Doc that will have questions. So as you go through the video, I'll say in the video, pause, go to the Google Doc and answer a question about what I just said in the video. Questions all, should all be very you know, obvious if you're going through the video. It's just meant to teach you not to be this challenging, hard thing to answer. And then the third component will be occasionally I'll have um, a Google slide animations you can click through, and that'll be clearly stated when you need to do that, like in the video and then in the uh, Google Doc. So uh, have fun, and I hope you learn a lot. Pause the video if you have not read the, uh, have you, if you haven't started with the Google Doc, um, how to use our IR spectrometer. That document will have questions that will lead you, that you'll answer as you go through the video. And so like, I'll tell you something in the video and then I'll say, okay, pause the video, go over and answer a question in this how to use our IR spectrometer document. And then after you answer that question, you come back, restart the video, look for the next question. So where is this document? It's here. <laughs> I know it's an ugly, long email address. Uh, I don't know how to make a clickable link in a YouTube video, <laughs> so that's what I got for you. If, but if you're in my class, you just it's easy. You just go to the web, uh, instead of using that web address, you go to uh, the clickable link for this in, in our Canvas shell at um, Laboratory File Links. You'll find it there. You just click on it. And uh, yeah, so after so go there if you haven't already, and then start. You'll, you'll have the questions you can answer as you go through the video. Hey guys, welcome to lab. We are here. Well, I am here. <laughs> Only one in the building, I think. So uh, here we are. We're going to go in my office and we're going to go through my office into the lab and we're going to run the IR spectrometer. Okay, here we go. This is where you would probably be if it were not for a pandemic. You'd be at this whiteboard working on stuff constantly. Yep, there you go. And you'd don't want to not have your pre-lab ready. Okay, here we go in the lab, into the instrument room. And here's the setup. Got the iPad recording the screen. I have the uh, webcam over here in the in in the area where we place our sample of the IR. So this is our IR spectrometer. It's a uh, Perkin Elmer IR. It's an older one, but it works well. So we'll put our sample in here. And then you can imagine infrared light coming through the sample compartment area. And that light can be absorbed by the molecules and they start to do their disco. And if they, uh, then the infrared passes through to the detector and we make a spectrum out of it. Here's some of that disco I was telling you about. Let's look and see what happens when the uh, molecules absorb infrared light with their covalent bonds absorb that light. So here's a, a gif, some gifs that my student Gurneet made, an honor student back in uh, 2017. So here's the IR spectrum of this carboxylic acid with an alkene and some of the main signals we've memorized is the big mess by the OH of the acid, the carbonyl of the acid, the sp3 carbon to hydrogen signal below 3000, an alkane signal, and then the sp2 carbon to hydrogen signal a little past 3000, over 3000. So here's what happens. Boom, boom, bam, 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 bam. It's dancing away, right? And then over here we got the CH stretch. So when the infrared light's hitting this molecule, it, if the right energy, if these particular energies is causing these kind of stretches and bends. Pretty cool, huh? This, uh, the alkene one is, is covered up by the, the OH of the acid, but it's in there. And here's a bunch more. We've got like for this formaldehyde molecule, we got an asymmetric stretch. And then we got the symmetric stretch, so symmetric, asymmetric, slightly different energies. And then we have the carbonyl stretch right here. And then we have the, the scissors. And then we got this guy's rocking over here. Going rock around the clock tonight. And then this one is the wag, and we didn't have a good gift for that, but that's the waggle over there. So 
So uh, yeah, okay. and here's our ATR adapter. I'm starting with the ATR adapter outside of the instrument. And then I'll put it in after I'll show you the difference. So whoa, let's see. So here's the, uh, if I get in close, a little focus. See that little silver thing right there, goldish circle in the middle there? That there is the zinc selenide crystal right there, that little guy. And then that, this here is the anvil that will crush down our solid samples to get IRs of with. But we'll see that shortly. Now let's first run it without the ATR adapter. We'll run it with a, as, as an old fashioned transmission IR spectrum. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn on the IR software. This is it, Spectrum. So I double click, click that, give it a little bit of time to start up. Okay, and the, and the stream that comes up here is asking us to sign in as an administrator. So you are all now administrators. Boom, no password. Okay, the first thing we need to do is run a background scan. The background scan will scan the air in the compartment of the IR and all some internal components of the IR. And it'll record that background scan and save it because then when it runs a sample, it'll take out the background signal. So you're only seeing your sample signals. So let me do that now. I'll go to instrument. Right here, instrument, scan, background. After I choose that, it'll give me some parameters I can change. We'll just use all the default parameters. We're gonna do single beam, uh, four scans. So I say, okay. And it'll start to scan the air and the internal components of the IR. <clears throat> and then the, the IR instrument is actually to the left of the screen you're looking at. Uh, and it'll come up soon here. Okay, it did four scans and now it's asking us to overwrite the previous background. So we will do that. We're gonna overwrite the previous background, type overwrite, and now this is the current background that's gonna be used for any samples. If later in the day you run another background, it'll overwrite this one and it'll just be the most recent one that you use. Okay, and then we look at this, this looks about right. So what I have here is this, this is air and some of the internal components of the instrument. If I come to this button right here, here, I can click it, I can get what's called the vertical cursor. So this vertical cursor, I can grab it and move it over so I can put it somewhere like right here. And as I'm moving it, it tells me where I'm at. So when I put it right here, it's telling me I'm at 3,857.14 reciprocal centimeters. And if I want to mark that peak, I just put my cursor on it. it looks like a resonance arrow when I do that. Huh? And if I double click, it'll give me a value right for that spot. And then if I grab it, I can move it off to the side. So that signal right there is at the 3,857.14. And then I can come over and I can label a signal right here. So this guy, get it where I want, double click, and there it is. And then I can move it over to this big guy in the middle. Kind of looks like a carbonyl, huh? Let's see. Ooh, 2360. That's not carbonyl. Carbonyl is usually it. Well, it doesn't seem like our carbonyls. It's carbonyls are usually at 1700-ish. So here, let's try this guy. Boom, got another one. All right, I got some good signals here. And then I can add a text box if I want by clicking the ABC, but this is just the background. I don't need to add a text box. Um, I'll tell you about what these signals are caused, how these signals will cause shortly. Um, if, and normally we run a background like this just to have it stored in there. And we just kind of look at it and see that it looks about right. If you see in the background like a an, more of a parabola shape in here, that probably means there's some moisture on the instrument or something. You want to clean it and run it again. But this looks appropriate. It's what we expected. So when we get it to look like we want, then we just delete it. And I hit the, the delete key on the keyboard. So I'm going to delete the background. It's 
All right, now uh, I'll run a sample. Uh, we have one here, it's a good one. This is uh, polystyrene, and it's this plastic film you see here, and, and it also has the, uh, it's IR spectrum, so when we run this polystyrene, it should look like the IR spectrum printed there. Polystyrene is a uh, very common, it's used to make styrofoam cups and styrofoam pellets and things, but it can also be made clear like this and be used in like envelopes, maybe when you get a bill in the mail, mail your envelope has a clear little window you can see through, it's probably polystyrene. Uh, also the white lids of Starbucks cups are polystyrene, those little sippy cup lids. Okay, so let's run this on the IR spectrometer. So I'm going to just take my polystyrene sample and slide it in this little holder. Now infrared light is going to pass through that film and some of it's going to get absorbed and start making the polystyrene molecule bounce. Am I going to start this scan of polystyrene? I will go to instrument, scan sample this time. Last time we did scan background, this time scan sample. And then after I hit scan sample, It'll come up with options again for us, some parameters to change, but we'll just use all the default values again. And uh, it's gonna do four scans like the background. It's gonna go from 4,400 reciprocal centimeters to 550. That's good for us. And then I click OK, and it'll start doing the four scans. Oh, it's looking good. There we go. So it comes up with the uh, overwrite. And we are just gonna overwrite because we're not gonna save these on the computer. I don't wanna fill up the hard drive. So when you run an IR, <clears throat> you're just gonna save it as the default name, overwrite the last person's sample. And here's our spectrum. It looks really good, doesn't it? Compared to uh, the one on the card here. Almost exactly alike, right? Okay, so let's, uh, let's label some signals, some of the key ones that we've learned about. And, uh, oh, there's something interesting there. That looks a little different than on the card. But other than that, it looks really good. So let's label some signals. We're going to uh, label some peaks. This is how, what I want you to do when you take an IR. And also um, put a text box on there and then you'd print it up. So I'll show you how to do that. First off, I want to, I don't want it to be so stretched out. I want to squeeze it in like this. So I'm just going to squeeze the screen squeeze the screen like that. It's kind of a delay. When I squeeze the screen, like I'm going to squeeze it and then it's going to shrink watch. All of a sudden you'll see, oh, see, see it worked, right? And I can also like move the spectrum that way. If I like tap the side of the screen, like, oh, I went too far. So I have to tap it back this way, like this, like, see, oh, there it is. Oh, it, if I, if I go too far too, it's like, oh, oh no, it's off for the screen. If that happens, I guess you got to start over. Now you can just do this. There's a, there's a button here, if you click this one, it'll adjust the vertical height, and if you click that one, it adjusts the horizontal. Okay, so, but I wanna still get it, I wanna squeeze it a little bit, so let me squeeze it like that, let me see, does it work, does it work? Oh, there it is, yeah, just like that. I like to see it all on screen like that. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll bring up my vertical cursor, so this is my vertical cursor, right? It's already on, because I had it on last time. I could turn it on and off with this button, like I can turn it off again, and then I can turn it on again, and then, off again, or I can turn it back on again, or what? Why would I turn it off? I, I want to use it. All right, anyways, so here we go. So I'm gonna put it over here. I'm gonna double click and look at that. A little over 3,000. What's that for? 3,022.85 reciprocal centimeters. That's an SP2 carbon hydrogen, which we have a lot of, a lot of because of the benzene rings. And then uh, polystyrene has benzene rings. And then this guy right here, if I double click that, look at that, a little less than 3,000, 2908.57. So that's for your alkane sp3 carbon hydrogens and polystyrene has that. And then um, we don't have any more that we've memorized. So the ones we've memorized are like, uh, the ones further to the right would be like a carbonyl at about 1700, but there isn't one. This is at 1598. I'll go ahead and label it just for the, just to label a few. So that one's pretty good, right? I'm gonna label this one. Let's see, is this a Jesse one? It might be. Oh, well, there's no oxygen in this. Never mind, Jesse. So then these, right? These are interesting ones. These we won't label them, but they're called aromatic overtones. They're a sign of like benzene rings. So that's good. 
Okay, so I've, I've labeled the ones that, you know, we've memorized. Uh, and the, so I've done that and I've labeled a few more. Maybe if I want, I can label one more over here. It doesn't really matter that much, but in the fingerprint region here. Okay, now I've labeled enough so I can turn the vertical cursor off, right? Just by clicking that. Or I can turn it on again, off again. Okay, it's off. So I can go now to add a text box. So I can say this is Poly -st Polystyrene, and today's date is what? The 22nd, huh? First day, no, second day of fall. Or first day of fall. I yeah, first day of fall 2020. And then I put my name, so Mark Steel. There we go. Oh, if I want to put a little more, I could put um, transmission IR. Because I took this uh, IR, the old fashioned way, transmitting the, the IR frequencies through the sample. I'll do this again, but I'll do it with the ATR adapter. So let's go ahead and finish this one off. So I say OK to that. Put my text box wherever I want. We'll fit up here. Looks pretty good up there. There we go. And then if I want to print it, I just hit the print icon. So I'm going to go ahead and print it. And if our printer works, we'll get a nice spectrum. If not, it'll jam the paper and then we'll unjam it and redo it. <laughs> our printer's a little old, but it's okay. We'll see if it works here. Saying tray two is empty of the printer, which I think is good. I think it's less likely to jam. There we go, it's coming out, looking good. Yeah, look at that. We got ourselves a nice printout of our NMR, of our IR spectrum. Okay, next up, the ATR adapter. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to take this out, the little card holder thing. This would hold like sodium chloride salt plates or potassium bromide salt uh, pellets, but we're not having to use those because we have our ATR adapter. Luckily, California Lottery was good one year and they had some extra money. I was able to splurge and get us this uh, ATR adapter. So I just line it up with these holes right here, start screwing it in. This isn't something you'll do, this will just be on for all, all the time. Uh, it was just in the training I showed you the transmission iron. Okay, here we go. So I've got my ATR adapter hooked up there, and uh, I want to make sure my zinc selenide crystal is clean. So wipe that off with the chem wipe. If it looks dirty, it looked clean to me, but if it looked dirtier than that, I'd, I'd kind of wet the chem wipe with a little ethanol and then do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this guy because I already printed it up and I'm done with it. So I, all I do is hit the delete key. It's gone. Now I need. I need to run a new background scan because the first background scan was within the transmission IR type setting where the IR beam just went through air and, the, and some of the internal components of the IR. But now it's gonna go through the zinc selenide crystal. So we need to redo the background. So easy enough, we just go to instrument, scan background again, keep all the same default values and it'll start. Okay, the background scan's done. I'll click overwrite. All right, so the background looks good. Uh, looks similar to before, right? We've got this here, here. It looks all good. So I'm gonna just delete it because now it's, it's looking like it should. It looks like it has in the past, and now I'm ready to run a sample here. So I'm gonna take. I'm gonna try to run this uh, polystyrene film again. So what I'll do, since it's a solid, I have to put it down in the compartment, and then I have to force it down onto the uh, zinc selenide crystal. Oh, let me tell you about that actually first. So the way you think of this zinc selenide crystal is the infrared light comes in here and there's a mirror with inside of this. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you. Okay, so this is our ATR adapter, right? Looking at it this way. When I twist it sideways, you can probably see Inside of there, there's a mirror. See, that's a mirror right there. That mirror that's in here will have the infrared light hit off the mirror and then ink into the zinc selenide crystal 
and it does total reflectance. It bounces back and forth through there, kind of like a fiber optic cable. And then the infrared light bounces through there and a little bit leaks out of the zinc selenide crystal into our sample. And then it can go back into the zinc selenide crystal. It hits another mirror on this side. It's kind of hard to see, but yep. So it hits one mirror, bounces around, hits the other mirror, and then it's off to the detector. So that's what was happening in our background scan we just did. Now we're going to run the polystyrene. So I'll put this on here. And the polystyrene, it, it's not in contact enough with the zinc selenide crystal currently. So I have to twist this anvil down. And as I'm twisting it down, watch carefully how there's copper here and then stainless steel. You have to like get the stainless steel all almost completely encased in the black thing there. So if you can barely just see a little silver lining, you on camera you probably can't see it. Now it's down enough. You have to give it a fair amount of like pressure, otherwise this won't work. And then we'll come over to the instrument and we'll hit uh, instrument, scan, sample again, and then OK. And we'll start doing four scans. And these scans will probably, well, they won't be actually as strong as the transmission IR because that zinc selenide crystal we use absorbs some infrared light. But that's okay. It's, oh wow, it's a lot weaker, huh? So then I click OK, overwrite. Yeah, it's, it's way weaker, huh? But it's in the ballpark. Uh, I can expand it. I can stretch it out a little bit. Like I can just, I just got to grab the two ends of the monitor and really pull. And like, watch, I pull, there's kind of a delay. Boom. Oh, see, it did it. And then I got to tap it down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Let me pull a little more. Ugh. Pull it a little bit. There we go. And then tap it down. There. Not bad. I'm going to pull it a little more. Oh. All right. And then I'm going to tap it down. See? Well, I like that. Yeah. So you can see the signals are, are weaker when an ATR adapter in there but they're still there, it looks good. I can label some like I did before. I bring up the vertical cursor right here and I can click to bring it on, it's over here, the green line. And I can click to turn it off and then I can bring it on again, off again, on again. Why would I bring it off? I just, I wanna label some. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna double click on this guy. Oh, 3,225 looks similar to before, right? And double click on this one. There we go, 2920, looking good. And then I've got my you know, aromatic overtones again. I got a couple signals here I can label. Looking good, looking good. Maybe this big one here, I don't have to do all these, but just doing some, some to get a few representatives here in the fingerprint region. I did have some of these come off scale, but that's okay. This isn't, isn't the area I'm most interested in. Once again, a text box, I wanna add a text box. I click on the ABC there, and I type in what I got. I got polystyrene, and always put the date. So it's 9-22-2020. And this one's run by me. Mark the string to the steel. And then it's, uh, this one was an ATR, attenuated total reflectance um, adapter. We use the ATR adapter for this one. I guess it, okay. Put that over here, say, there we go. And then to print it, I just hit the print button. It should work good. Now let's run a uh, let's run a liquid sample. But before we run a liquid sample or a sample that we know of, I want us to always draw it out and predict our main elements to it. So, but first off, here you go. Here is the uh, ATR adapter polystyrene. Looking really good, right? Nice. So I'm gonna run ethanol. So here's the ethanol I'm going to run, uh, ethyl alcohol. And uh, I'll just put a little of this liquid on there to run it. Uh, so, but let me first predict its main signals so I, I know what I'm looking for. 
And also, let's delete that current one there. I, I don't have to rerun a background now because I'm using the HDR adapter again. And this background scan I did, I don't, I probably don't have to run it again for the rest of the semester, but I usually have you run it just to get practice and think about it. And also, in case the person before you didn't, they maybe ran a background, but they had stuff on the HR adapter, it was dirty. So this background's not good, so you wanna redo it then. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, I'll come over to the, oh, wait. I'm gonna predict the ethanol um, IR spectrum first. I'll do that as a screen capture. Okay, before we take an IR, I always want you to try to predict what you're gonna see on the IR spectrum. Just grab a piece of paper and pencil predict it before you go. And so here's our ethanol IR prediction. So we draw out the structure ethanol and we look at it and we go, which ones, what are the uh, signals we've memorized and we should know? The OH of an alcohol, we should know that one's about 3,300 reciprocal centimeters or wave numbers. That's the alcohol OH parabola. Should look something like that. We're expecting that. <clears throat> and then we wanna draw out any other bonds we need to know, the ones we've memorized. So there's a, sp3 carbon hydrogen there that's i just threw into drawing and that carbon hydrogen bond shows up a little less than 3000 2980 reciprocal centimeters so that's the sp3 carbon hydrogen also you can refer to it as the alkane carbon hydrogen or the alkyl carbon hydrogen or the aliphatic that's an older old-fashioned type word aliphatic carbon hydrogen bond and it looks something like this usually, just a little less than 3,000. And for ethanol, that's the only ones we've memorized. There's other signals, but there's not many more. And these are the ones that uh, I said you should know. So we're gonna be looking for those when we take the IR of ethanol. Here we go. I've got my uh, ethanol. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit on here. It's kind of hard not to squirt too much, but uh, there it is. So I've got some liquid on there. And now I will come over to our instrument and do another instrument scan sample. Okay. And the ethanol, it's got a pretty low boiling point. It's about 80 degrees Celsius. I don't think it's all gonna boil away while we're waiting for these four scans, but some compounds that have a very low boiling point, they'll, they'll evaporate away before you are done with your scan. So what you can do in those situations is you can put this little disc over it. So if you have a, a liquid sample, you can you can put the liquid sample on the HR adapter and then cap it with this guy. And that'll slow down evaporation so you have enough time to take your scans. But with ethanol, we're okay. So I can overwrite this guy. And I'm gonna delete these extra text boxes. And look at that, just like we were predicting, it looks great, right? Here we go, we can move this vertical cursor it's already on but we could turn it off and then we could turn it on again and then off again and then on again and then why would we turn it off we got to use it so here, here we go so we got the ethanol signal right there that nice parabola and we've got this signal that oh a little less than 3000 that's the sp2 carbon hydrogens if we want to label this one we can let me i'll show you, i'll shrink the screen a little bit uh, let me see, it's kind of a delay. Uh, boom, there it is, yep. And then I'll take this over here, boom. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that's the carbon oxygen single bond. All right, and then uh, I can turn off the vertical cursor. And then I can go in out of text box. So this is ethanol. And today's date. And my name. And uh, this is an ATR adapter. All right, looking pretty good. Okay. All right, so now when I'm done running a scan, I want to clean the sample off. If it's a liquid, what you want to do is take a chem wipe and mop up most of the liquid. Got it. Maybe use a couple. And then after you've done that, then you want to clean the HR adapter with some ethanol. That's our cleaning solvent. 
And when you, oh, you know what? I did it wrong. <laughs> Don't do what I just did. That's not the way you want to do it. What you want to do is you want to squirt the ethanol on a chem wipe to then clean it off, right? Got it. And uh, the reason why I don't want you to squirt the ethanol directly onto here is because you could squirt a lot and it can get back here. And if it gets back, if it gets uh, back into this area back here, uh, right here, behind the disc, the puck we call it, it, you can get a lot of ethanol back there and it's not easy to chem wipe it out. And what happens over time is it'll just slowly start evaporating and the fumes will be in your spectrum in your background maybe. And so don't do that. So uh, and then you'll notice. I just cleaned off the ethanol we ran with ethanol. We not, won't normally run ethanol iron, but that's sort of a cleaning solvent. Now we're going to do a solid. We're going to do an IR of a solid. The solid we're going to do is this vanillin. We're going to be chilling with vanillin. Chilling with vanillin. So vanillin is this white solid and when you open it, it has a very nice smell. So go ahead and put your nose up close to the screen. Oh, do you smell it? Like vanilla cookies? Ooh, nice, huh? If you're ever in a like a Starbucks or something like that and they allow you to like put creamer and things in your drink, they a lot of times will have vanilla powder. It's, it's, I, I actually took some of the vanilla powder out of the Starbucks. I put it in a little napkin and folded it, put it in my pocket. But I had bought a coffee, so it wasn't like I was stealing. But I got the vanilla powder and I put it, brought it in here and I took an IR. It looks just like this. All right, so here's our vanilla. Uh, oh, before I run the vanilla, what do I need to do always? Draw out the structure if I know what it is, like I do with vanilla. Predict its, its signals and then, then run it. So I know what I'm looking for on the screen. Now for vanilla, uh, we want to predict this just like we did with ethanol before. Um, before we run the vanilla, we're going to predict it. it. There will be experiments. Well, <laughs> I don't know, not this year, but probably. But there, there, there are experiments where you won't know what you're looking for, like an unknown. And so you can't really predict before you take it. But uh, most of the time, you either know what the molecule is you're taking an IR spectrum of, or you're anticipating it. Like if you were trying to do a reaction to produce vanilla, and that's your goal is to make it, then you should be able to draw its structure and predict what you're gonna get. So here's vanillin, it's pretty cool. It's got a, it's a benz aldehyde. It's got the aldehyde at the top. And if you actually take away this methoxy, the oxygen with the methyl, and the hydroxy here, if you take those two away, this is a liquid uh, called benzaldehyde. And that liquid has a really nice cherry almond smell. If you smell it, it's more like, I think cherries first, but if someone says, almonds i'm like yeah i could i could see that and so it's actually a component of both almonds and cherries but once you put the oh here and the methoxy here now it's no longer a liquid and it's a solid and also it smells now like um like vanillin a vanilla <laughs> it's a component of the vanilla extract and vanilla plant and so if you ever go to like starbucks or something you get some of that vanilla powder and you put it in your drink that's what this is what you're putting in your drink because I, I actually put a little of that vanilla powder in a in a napkin when i was at starbucks once oh, i'll take it back and i'll take an ir of it and the ir looked just the same as what you're going to see here so what do we expect we expect a carbonyl signal uh, about 1700 <clears throat> and that's uh, those are strong sharp signals and then we expect around 3300 the alcohol parabolic signal there it is, and we're gonna find that it doesn't quite happen, but I'm just, uh, it's okay to predict it initially like this because this isn't actually technically an alcohol. And when an OH is attached directly to a benzene ring, we call it a phenol. So this isn't an alcohol, it's a phenol. We'll see that shortly. And then I'm gonna draw out some of the other bonds that we memorized. So uh, we've got the sp3 carbon hydrogen signal that shows up a little less than 3000. And we can call that an alkane carbon hydrogen or alkyl carbon hydrogen or even an aliphatic. You could say you could think maybe aliphatic because fats are long hydro have long hydrocarbon chains of so CH of like a sp3 carbons, CH2, CH2, CH2 long chains, and they're fats. So aliphatic, it's kind of along the same line. And then we have the sp2 carbon hydrogen, that's a little over 3000. 
and uh, it's an sp2 carbon hydrogen signal you can call it an alkene carbon hydrogen signal or a vinyl carbon hydrogen signal another older term and it'll look something like that it's similar to the alkyl or alkane signal but a little bit weaker usually all right and then oh and then i call these alkene al vinyl ones sp2 carbon hydrogens and i maybe i shouldn't because there are sp2 carbon hydrogens that don't show up a little over 3000 and the aldehyde here is one of them so um the it's actually i should have maybe set this up different it's this carbon hydrogen bond right here that's an sp2 carbon and that's a hydrogen but this bond does not show up at 3020 uh, it winds up, it shows up uh, as like a tooth. It looks like a tooth to me for some reason. I don't know why I think of a tooth, but it's got that double signal there. And one of them is about 2850. And I want you to notice that it's 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 more, it's a lower energy than 2980. So don't try to, try to like really look carefully. Like if it's, it's gotta be real close to 3000 to be an, uh, an alkane. And then if it's, if it's 2850, that's pretty good dis distance away. It's going to be an aldehyde CH. And then the other side's at 2730. I, I visually just look for that double signal like a tooth. And then, yeah, I have my signal. See, like, here we go. It's going to go like this. And then we got to do a little jump bloop, over the red bond. And that's, that's the one there. So when you have an aldehyde, you'll get this double tooth thing. All right, let's see what we actually get. So here's my vanillin. I got the cap off of it. All you need is just a pinch of it. You don't need much. So let's see. this is way more than enough right here. So this is more than enough vanillin. Okay, so this is how I do it. I take the vanillin and I put it carefully right on that zinc selenide crystal window covering it up. This is more than enough, but I have plenty of it since it is, uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot and I don't do this once a year. <laughs> I think I have enough vanilla in that little vial to last till I, till I retire. So uh, let me clamp this down and you'll notice again, my uh, the copper part of this is it's going down and the silver is almost completely in the black thing. And then I give it a little bit of a torque, like as if I were turning the keys to a car back in the old days when you didn't have the key fobs. <laughs> and then this took and crushed the solid onto the zinc selenide crystal so it'll get a really good contact. And I'll come over here to the instrument and I'll delete the old ethanol one and now just go instrument, scan sample. Okay. And it's gonna do four scans just like before. And this takes very little time compared to if you wanted to make a, a potassium bromide pellet and do transmission IR. If you, if you didn't have an a, a, a ATR adapter, like we're lucky enough to have, that's what you'd have to do. That can take sometimes, you know, five minutes, but sometimes like an hour if it's like you're just not getting the right ratio of your sample and the potassium bromide, you usually have like one milligram of your sample and about 80 milligrams of potassium bromide. And then you mix it up and crush them quickly because they're hydroscopic, but potassium bromide is not dry enough to begin with or if you have the ratio wrong you put too much in the press there's all these problems so this is so convenient here we go overwrite looking good it looks a little different than you probably protect predicted and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a little bit but first let me uh, go ahead and uh, I'll adjust the text box so first so this is vanillin Chilling with vanillin, yep, the date, mark, yep, looks good. And now I'm gonna turn on the vertical cursor. You just click that button, you can turn it on. It's over here. Or I could turn it off. Or I could turn it on again, off again, on again. Why would I turn it off? I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. So I'll move it over here. This is the OH right here. Boom, got it, right? Move that off to the side. And then this one right here, let's see what this one is. Ooh, just a little over 3,000. We know what that is. That's sp2 carbon hydrogen. And then I come over here, 2942. Uh, yeah, I think that's maybe not. I think 
This one is the SP2, yeah, that's maybe the SP2 carbons as well. There's uh, vanillins and aldehyde, so it'll also have the aldehyde CH signals, the carbonyl carbon to hydrogen, and that's one of them too. I don't remember for sure if this is from the aldehyde. I think this is still SP3 carbon to hydrogen. We'll check it out. And then we should have an aromatics, I mean a carbonyl signal, and we do. It's not quite 1700, it's kind of lower, but that is indicative of a carbonyl attached to a benzene ring. And then we got some other signals here. That's carbon-carbon double bonds. Uh, and this guy, it's kind of touching the bottom. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna squish it a little bit. So if I squish it, I just gotta squish and there's kind of a delay, but here it goes, ready? Oh, it's kind of delayed a little bit. There it is, yeah, now it's off the bottom. And then I can move it over here. Doop, doop, looking good. Maybe you do one more. There we go. So I'm good to go. This, this spectrum looks good. I'm going to go ahead and just print it. Click print icon and send it to the printer for us. To our sample on the HR adapter. How are we going to clean this off? What you're going to do is you're going to you know, screw the anvil up and then you're going to take a chem wipe and get it a little wet with ethanol. Use that to help you grab onto the vanillin. If you were using something that's more dangerous than vanillin, you can use gloves for this. Or if it is uncomfortable, you can use gloves, but you could, this vanillin's not too dangerous. Put it in your coffee. And then uh, you can wipe it up good. I, I got another wet one, and I'm gonna wipe the tip of the anvil too. Add a little bit of overspray here. I'll get that too. I'm going to do one more since it's solid. Okay, and then and I'm getting the tip good. Everything looks pretty good here. Lastly, I'll take a dry chem wipe, no ethanol on it, just to make sure this is nice and dry for the next sample. If, if, if someone's coming in right behind me, I want to make it nice and clean and dry for them, or if I have another sample to run. And uh, that's how we run the IR spectrometer with solids and liquids. Pretty easy, actually. And uh, hopefully you guys will get to come here in the spring and do it yourselves. All right, thanks for listening.